Hello chemists, this is Ms. Placino and you are watching a tutorial on graphing. In this video, we're going to cover uh, graphing basics. We're going to go through a quick activity with pen and paper graphing. This is something we are not going to do over the course of the semester, but it serves as a nice way to review some fundamental concepts in graphing. And finally, we're going to graph with Google Sheets. Let's get started. A graph provides a visual representation of the data. A uh, picture is worth a thousand words. A graph kind of falls into that category. We're going to use scatter plots in this class. And these uh, graphs are most helpful when you're trying to demonstrate a trend or when there is a lot of numerical data. Uh, so for example, with this graph, uh, there's a lot of points on the graph. That's a healthy amount of numerical data. I wouldn't want to sit there and analyze it all as just individual pieces of data. It's much more meaningful graph so I can see what the general trend is. And it looks like the more hours spent studying, the higher the score is on the exam. Of course, there are some exceptions to that. But I'd say the general trend looks something like that. Most of the points are pretty close. When you go to make a graph, you have to be careful about where you put your, um, your variables. You can't just arbitrarily put them on the x and y axis. Your independent variable goes on the x axis. This is the variable that is controlled during the experiment, so you choose the values. The dependent variable goes on the y-axis, and the dependent variable is monitored as the independent variable is changed. Uh, so let's say that you decide to run the world's cutest experiment. You want to put dogs on treadmills, and you want to monitor their heart rate as the, uh, the pace changes. I had to think of an excuse to use this GIF. It's just too cute. So you've got your data, you've got a graph, you've plotted it. Uh, before you can just be done with the graph itself, there's some other things that need to be included. First off, you need to label and provide units for your x and y axes. So in this case, I've got heart rates in terms, for, in terms of beats per minute on the y, and I've got my pace in terms of minutes per mile on the x-axis. Um, the way the graph is set up, I'm communicating that I chose the pace, that's my independent variable, and I monitored heart rate as pace changed. So heart rate is my dependent variable. You need to make sure that you have a reasonable scale on each axis. And this is something that a graphing program is going to take care of for you. Uh, but notice that I didn't start heart rate at zero, for example. Uh, that'd be a very bad situation for the dog. Um, but from a graphing perspective, all of my data is going to be pushed towards the top of the graph and kind of get smushed. You want to try to spread it out as much as possible. Include a title. Uh, it's always y-axis versus x-axis. So I'd have heart rate versus pace in this case. And if you've got multiple sets of data, you want to include a legend. Let's go ahead and try making a graph. So you can pause the video and try this out on your own, or you can just kind of follow along with me. A student measures the volume of the liquid. He then finds the mass of the liquid. Make a plot of the data. All right, before I can just start throwing my data on the graph, I should probably get things labeled. Uh, so I have... Let's see, they are measuring the volume and then finding the mass. So it sounds like volume is my independent and mass is my dependent variable. So mass needs to go on the y-axis. I've got a reasonable scale. Uh, my mass is ranged from about two to about 10. So I've got from zero to 14 covered. Same thing with my volume. I'll put that on the x-axis again, about zero to 14. And I've got my units in both cases. Let's title the graph. It's always y versus x. So in this case, mass versus volume. And now we can go through and put my points on the graph. There we go. Nothing to it. You've probably been graphing for many, many years. So let's do a little bit of analysis of our graph. Uh, first, find the outlier and explain why it's an outlier. You might notice that this point seems like it's not really in line with all the other points. Um, so I'd say from trial three, that's my outlier. Uh, what I would do in this case is I'd still show it on my data table, but I'd put a star next to it and just make a note that I've omitted it from the graph because it is an outlier. So I can essentially just cross it out and ignore it. Draw a trend line. Trend line is exactly what it sounds like. It shows the general trend of the data. You want to try to connect as many points as possible. That's what I came up with. The relationship between the variables, well, it's a direct relationship. As the volume increases, so does the math, uh, mass. If your volume is equal to nine milliliters, what is the mass? Well, now that I have my trend line, I can start with my volume of nine milliliters. I can trace up, I can trace over. Looks like I'm just underneath that nine gram mark. Ooh, sorry, that's really sloppy. But I can estimate the approximate mass. 
the slope. Uh, we know slope is equal to rise over run, so the change in y over the change in x. So in this case, I'll use these two points since they're on lines. I've got a rise of two grams over a run of two milliliters. So I end up with a slope of oops, one gram per milliliter. So it looks like my slope is really representing density. Nice. All right, again, we're not going to be doing our graphs with pencil and paper or pen and paper. We have the technology to use spreadsheets and make a much better looking graph. And there are really a number of cool things that you can do with any spreadsheet. Uh, we're going to be using Google Sheets and really just reviewing a whole bunch of different things that you're going to have to be able to do with your graphs. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, so here we are in Google Sheets, and you can see that I've already entered my data. Um, hopefully by looking at the data, you can tell that this is pretty similar to the pen and paper activity that we just did a few moments ago. Uh, we conducted some sort of density study. One thing spreadsheets aren't very good at are paying attention to significant figures. For example, if I use like a volumetric pipette, and this volume is supposed to be 5.00 milliliters because our volumetric glassware measures the two places after the decimal point, you can see that once I hit enter, the spreadsheet just kind of turns it back into just a whole number. If you want to address that, it doesn't make a big difference for your graph, but if you would like to be a little bit more, um, I guess, accurate or precise with your information, you can click on format number and click number again, and that'll bring it to what you had originally typed in. Not a big deal for the graph, but it's nice to be consistent. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a graph. I'm just going to ignore this mass of ethanol column for the time being and just make it a simple graph with two pieces of data, I guess two sets of data. Uh, so I'm going to click on insert chart and Google does all the work for me and it'll pull up a bunch of different possible charts. You want to click on the one that is the scatter chart. So you just have plots kind of scattered across your graph. Click on insert and it does all the hard stuff for you. It makes your graph. If you want to change anything around, for example, change the name or the title of the graph, and you want to just make that mass versus volume, click on it and you can edit it right there. Um, spreadsheets tend to pick a pretty reasonable range for your data, but if you'd like to change the axis, if you just click on it, you can set a new minimum and maximum value. Let's say I just pick 100. You can see it kind of smushes my data all towards the left side of the graph. You want to avoid that if possible. So it seems like Google Sheets did a really good job picking an appropriate data, appropriate um, scale for the axis, excuse me. Um, if you want to, actually you're going to need to for this class, you're going to have to add things like a trend line, um, our squared value, the equation of the trend line, and you get to all of that through advanced edit. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it gives you the opportunity to look at the mass of water series. So that's what we have plotted right here. Um, and you can add things like a trend line. So it looks like this is supposed to be a linear relationship. Google Sheets will go ahead and draw the trend line for you. You can label it with the equation. You can see that shows up over here. And you can check the box for show R squared. And you can do a little research and figure out what that number is all about. I click update, it's going to update the graph. Uh, let's say that you realize that you've made a mistake or you found an outlier, for example, this data point at 40 milliliters and you want to get rid of it. If you just go to the data point, in this case, yeah, there definitely seems to be something uh, irregular with that piece of data. I can just delete it and the graph gets automatically updated. I don't have to worry about erasing it and setting up a new one. Everything's still there. You can see that my um, equation of the line changed a little bit, my R squared value changed a little bit, all because I got rid of that piece of data. I'm going to put it back in there. You can see again, it just automatically adjusts. Let's say that you want to put in the information uh, for the density of ethanol study. Uh, again, you don't have to erase the whole thing and start over. I click on my graph, I get this little drop down menu. I'm going to select, where did it go? Uh, advanced edit. And if I go over to recommendations, it gives me the ability to add a second range of data. So if I click on this little grid, I can select another data range, move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing, add another range, 
and highlight that data range. And that should plot it on the graph. So let's go ahead and update that. And that's what I have. Volume, mass, everything's the same. Now I've got an additional set of data points for ethanol as well. Uh, so since I've got ethanol and water, I probably want to make some changes to the y-axis in this case. I don't want that to say mass of water. I just want it to say mass and give me a unit. If you don't like that this is mass of water and mass of ethanol, if you go back to the data itself, you change that. It'll automatically update it in your graph. Same thing for ethanol. And if we want to go through and add the trend line and the R square value for ethanol, you do it in much the same manner. Right click, advanced edit. Scroll all the way to the bottom. I guess almost all the way to the bottom here. Uh, where it says series water, we want to change that to ethanol. And I can go through the same process I did before. Add a linear trend line. Use the equation show r squared. Now all that information is present over here as well. One thing to keep in mind, uh, the graph looks really pretty on the computer, but if you don't have access to a color printer, when you go to turn in this graph, it's just going to look like two shades of gray, and it's going to be all but impossible for me to determine which set of data is which. Uh, so I would recommend going through and for one of the sets, uh, change the data points. It's probably the easiest way to do it. So I'll just make them diamonds for example. If you're worried that the colors you've got aren't going to, um, they're still going to be kind of grayscale, they may be difficult to see, you can just change them to black. I'll do the same thing for water as well. I know it definitely does not look as pretty as it did in color, but remember, if you're printing it out in black and white, this is a safer way to do it. Click update, and there you have it. All right, now that you've got all the data plotted, you've got your equation of the trend line displayed, you've got an R squared value, uh, you can actually do something pretty interesting with your equation of a line. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Let's look at the information for water. Um, any straight line can be exp uh, expressed with the equation y is equal to mx plus b. And if you think back to math class, um, m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Um, and if you look at your graph, you can see that y is representative of masses. So we really have the mass is equal to the slope of that line times the unit on the x-axis, our volume, plus the y-intercept. Now, usually when you've got a graph and you're trying to figure out you know, what the um, mass of 56 milliliters of water would be, or 56 milliliters of ethanol, you just kind of do that thing like we did in the pen and pencil activity, or pen and paper activity, uh, and kind of trace up to the line and trace over. And that's not very exact. So there's a much more um, accurate way to do that, and it's by using this equation. So if you look, uh, we've got for water, y, is equal to 1.019 times x minus, uh, what does that say, 0 0.078. Um, again, Google Sheets and most spreadsheet programs don't understand sig figs. You need to look back at your data to figure out what's going on. Um, you've got everything to no more than three sig figs, so I would just kind of fix that. I'd make that 0 0.0780, and I would change this to 1.02x. Let's start filling in what we know. Uh, the mass oops, is going to be equal to 1.02 times the volume, in this case, minus 0 0.0780. So if I want to know what the mass of a 56 0.00 milliliter sample of water is going to be, 
instead of trying to estimate it using the graph, I can plug into this equation and I can calculate it and end up with a much more reasonable answer than simply like using the line and trying to trace down and trace across. Uh, you're going to have to use that equation, y equals mx plus b, um, almost every time that you've got a graph in this class, and uh, solve for an unknown by plugging in uh, the information that you have from the graph. All right, um, so I think that pretty much wraps it up. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot. Um, instead of just printing out the entire page, what you're going to probably want to do is copy and paste this into a Google Doc. So again, I'm just going to click on Copy Chart. All right, got that. Um, and I can paste it. And it asks you if you want to link the chart to the spreadsheet. And I would say go ahead and link it, and I'll show you why go we've got our so it's centered all right we've got our graph in there uh, let's say that as you're reviewing your data you realize you made a mistake um, i'm going to make a pretty ridiculous change just so it's very obvious to see i'm going to turn this to 50 and see that it makes a dramatic impact on the graph i have the option to update my graph and you can see that it just updates it automatically. So that way, if you make changes in your spreadsheet, uh, when you go back to the Google Doc, you can just update it. You don't have to worry about deleting it and then copying and pasting in a new one. And um, yeah, that should hopefully save you a little bit of time and some work. That wraps it up for Google Sheets. Um, it's a really powerful program. We're not going to be doing a ton of graphs this semester, but it's definitely worth learning how to use this program. Hope you found this helpful.